Hi, I'm Colin. Welcome to this workshop on how to make a fold-over comic. A fold-over comic is a really easy, fun project that you can make at home by yourself. Or you can make it with your friends. And when you're done, you can even make copies of your comic and then you get to give them out to all your friends and show how great you are. You can make your comic about anything you want. Here's the one I made about myself. The Adventures of Superhero Captain Colin. My girlfriend's a really big fan of this comic. And, oh, no, wait a second. She's telling me that she's actually a bigger fan of this comic, which she made of, about herself. That's, that's quite good, actually. And wait, why am I the sidekick in this? I'm not the... Anyway, you can make your comic about anything you want. About yourself. You can even make it about your favorite characters, TV series, comics, whatever you want. Okay, so what do you need to make your fold-over comic? The answer is not much at all. You'll need a blank sheet of paper. This is an A4 sheet of paper, the same size as you'd put in a printer or photocopier. If you don't have that size paper, don't worry, any size or shape will do. Even copybook paper from school is totally fine. Take out a page and what you need to do is you need to fold it over, okay? So fold it in half, give it a good crease along the edges like that. And then what you will have is your little booklet, the form of the comic. So you have your cover, first page, second page, and the third page. And that's the form of the comic. What else you will need? Uh, you'll need pencil, some kind of pen for inking, biro is okay, uh, rubber, because we all make mistakes, ruler, and something to color it in with. I use coloring pencils, which are totally fine, but you can use markers, crayons, paints, whatever you want. This little pack did me for a long time. Recently, I upgraded to a nice shiny pack of 24, but whatever you want to color is totally fine. If you want, you can get stuck in straight away and start drawing your comic. But what I like to do is spend a little bit of time thinking and planning about my comic first. So I come up with a story. The story for this comic was that we noticed at home that our cats would sometimes go a little crazy and just be running, jumping around the place, causing all kinds of trouble. And they would often do this oddly enough when the moon was full. So we decided obviously that our cats must be werewolves. So uh, first of all, I sort of did a plan for the comic. So I just wrote out what I want to happen in each of the panels. A panel is what we call each picture in a comic. So on the first page, my first picture is showing a full moon outside the window and then have a little caption box saying, it's a full moon. Then Aileen and Colin sitting on the couch. Aileen says, do you want to go outside? Colin says, no, I'm okay. And so on. So the next thing you want to do is to draw out your panels on the page. This is my cover. And on the first page, I think I'm going to put three panels. I've got nine panels or pictures overall in the comic, so I think three would be fine for the first page. So I'm going to try and space out three evenly sized boxes here. So about here, about here, doesn't need to be perfect, and here, and here. So then I'm going to use my ruler to line those in. So this is what you'll end up with. I've done it nice and heavy in ink, so you can see it clearly on the page, and I've got three panels marked out on my comic. So one important thing about your panels is that you don't want them all to be the same size and shape across your pages. So I have done three panels the same size in my first page, but then on my second page, I've done a couple of small panels, two even panels, and then on my final page, I've done one really big panel here where all the action happens, and a sort of smaller panel underneath it. And it helps keep your comic more interesting if you have different sizes and shapes of panels. So the next part is to start the artwork. So my first panel is nice and simple. I have a big full moon and I have a character saying, oh look it's a full moon. Then it gets a bit more interesting. I draw the two characters sitting on the couch. So on the first panel uh, I'm just going to draw a big old full moon here, taking out a good half of the panel. And I'm starting using a pencil. Any sort of a pencil will do and draw light with your pencil. This is really important to draw in nice and light. So that way you can kind of make mistakes and just kind of go over it as much as you want. Starting with stick figures is totally fine. Start with kind of stick figures and you can build them up, work out the shapes as you go along. And it doesn't matter by the way how good an artist you are or not. This isn't about being great at artwork. This is all about having fun and telling a really fun story that you want to tell. That is all that is important when you're making your own. Okay, now with all the pencils done, as we can see here, it's time now to move on to the lettering, 
which is where we put in all the words on the page of our comic. So the lettering can seem like quite a boring part of making a comic, but it's really, really important because if you go really quickly and make a mess of your pencils, then people won't be able to read the really fun comic that you've made. So a couple of tips for your lettering. Start using a pencil and go nice and light. Before you put in any words though, ideally what you want to do is you want to get a ruler and you want to line out where your words are going to go. Because that way, you know your letters, your words will be nice and straight and they won't be all crooked and wonky on the page. The second tip is to always use capital letters. If you look at any comic books that you have, you'll notice they always use capital letters because they're nice and big and clear on the page. So in this panel, Aileen is talking and then Colin is talking. And this is one other important thing to note is that whichever character is talking first needs to be on the left hand side of the page because when you read the comic, you read it from left to right. So Aileen talks first. I'm going to put in her talking about here. Colin's talking. I'm going to put in about here. Okay. So I get my ruler, I line it out. So sometimes it's sort of tempting and what some people will do is they'll draw in the bubble, the balloon where the dialogue goes first, and then they'll put the writing in. But you want to do it the other way around. You want to put in your writing first because then you'll know how big your balloon needs to be. After all your penciling and your lettering is in, then what we want to do is to ink the page. This is where we go over the rough, loose, light pencils and a good proper inking pen or biro. And then we can rub out the pencils. So this is a nice sort of inking pen that I got in an art shop, but honestly, any kind of a, a pen with a nice kind of thin nib will do. Black preferably. So I'm gonna go over my pencils with my black pen. And I'm going to do this for all the artwork on the page. And I'm also going to do this for my lettering. Let me get them both done at the same time. Having your inking done makes a huge difference to the page. All of a sudden, it's really coming to life. The artwork is sharper and neater and it just looks a lot better on the page. Now what you want to do, can't really see it here, but I've done the inking over the pencil lines. So what I want to do now is I want to take my rubber and I want to lightly go over the whole page and just rub out those pencil lines. So the ink, the pen won't rub out. So what you're left with is with the pencils gone, it's just lovely, neat inking on the page. So with all your inking done and the pencils nicely rubbed out, it's onto the coloring. So I don't think I need to tell you how to color something in, but I'll give you a few tips on how best to color your comics and sort of techniques that you can use. So the first thing for your main characters, use nice bright colors, okay? You want the main characters in your comic to really stand out. So give them nice bright colors like that. A few more notes. Here's a finished comic. You have a nice bright, colors for our two main characters. You'll see the background, I haven't colored in at all. And that's fine. There's no need to go kind of crazy and color in every square inch of the page. The background isn't that important. So it's fine to leave it blank if you want to. Also, you'll note the couch that they're sitting on. The couch is in most panels of the comic. Now it's a little bit hard to see it there. I'll bring it up closer to the screen. So I've done the couch in a really light green color. And this is again because the couch isn't important. So I didn't want the couch to sort of be standing out and taking up the attention. You want the attention to be on your characters and the cats, where there's cats in the comic. So now that all your coloring is done and your comic is fully complete, it's time to work on the cover. Now the cover is of course the first page of your comic, but I always like to leave the cover until last. This is because once I've drawn out the whole comic, I know really well what the story is about and then I can pick out one good picture to put on my cover. Now it can be tempting to try and put all your characters and everything that's going on in the comic on the cover of your comic. But really you're better off with one nice simple image that really stands out well for the cover of your comic. So what you want to do is you want to mark your page about leaving about a third of it to put the title 
and then the rest of it can be filled with your image. So for your title, you want nice, big, fun, bold colors. For this one, I've tried and used a kind of a spooky, weird, wibbly wobbly font, because it's sort of like my cat might be a werewolf, maybe. A bit more writing on this cover, because I wanted it to be kind of funny. And then, this is really, 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 really super important, put your name on the cover. So important, so everyone will know that you made the comic. And then, once you've colored in your cover, again, I like to keep it nice and simple. I use the brightest color for the cat and for the spooky font, and you're done. Your comic is completely finished. And that is the whole process on how to make your very own fold over comic. So now for the important part where you get started on your very own comic. Have fun and thanks for watching. Aren't you just a ferocious werewolf? Yes, you are. <laughs>